Jahan Shah Rashidian, a presenter of Rangin Kaman TV. Today, we have a discussion about what's going on actually in Vienna. My guest is Dr. Bijan Iftikhari, a good friend of mine, and he is also a presenter. Before, I used to be his guest, and now I am the host. Maybe next time you will be the host. Mr. Iftikhari, if you want to make a greeting statement to our audience, here is my microphone in your disposition, please. Thank you so much, Yansha. Uh, I'm very happy to be here and thank you for invitation. I hope we're gonna have a very, let's say fruitful discussion about the Iran, Iranian regime and what is going on in Vienna. Exactly. Vienna actually is a very important place for not only Iranians, but also for Europeans and probably the USA at the top of all problems actually with the regime, Islamic regime. The regime has been uh, concerned and engaged in this problem since 2015, as you know, the first atom deal that was, uh, that was, uh, uh, that was problematic with uh, Trump's administration. And he withdrew uh, from uh, the, the deal they signed in 2015. And the problems remain now hard to manage that. And that is the reason we have this uh, meeting in Vienna to bring back two parties at the same uh, agreement they had in the 2015. In your opinion, what is the interest for America, the Islamic regime, Europe, Russia, and China? Each of them probably have their own interests. The microphone is in your position. Go ahead, please, five minutes. Thank you so much. Very good question, John Shaw. Uh, let's uh, start with Iranian. Uh, if you remember about uh, two weeks ago, Iranian authorities, they said that uh, we don't want to uh, negotiate with the United States directly or indirectly. But as usual, we see that they are in Vienna meeting and they have, uh, Robert Molly from United States is in that conference. Yes, they, they don't come to uh, uh, around the table or in a room, but they are negotiating. And it means that uh, Iranian regime is desperately wants to negotiate. Why? Why Iranian regime uh, tries to negotiate and come back to the GCOPA, the agreement that they uh, got with United States and five plus one, group in 2015. The reason is obvious and it's financial. They are in a very dire financial situation right now. Uh, just let, let's look at the recent uh, report from the International Monetary Fund regarding Iranian financial situation. It's, it's uh, to me, it was really uh, horrifying because it says that Iranian had about $110 billion in their saving account. And now it has decreased to just $9 billion, 110 to 9 billion. It says again, that Iranian had about $150 billion in the frozen bank accounts because of the sanctions in 2015, and now this had been decreased to only $40,000, $40 billion. So, and the thing is based on the agreement in 2015, Iran is just, can withdraw 10% of the frozen accounts. So if they right now uh, it's, $40 billion, they are, entitled, they are entitled to just 4 
million dollars for 2021. So, and also the most important part, which we should say thanks to Mr. Uh, Trump, uh, Trump again sanctions and uh, try to stop Iranian uh, oil uh, process, I mean, selling oil to other countries. Uh, they used to ex ex uh, export about uh, two, billion, uh, 2 million barrel a day, and now it's uh, decreased to just 500,000 barrel a day. Even less, so, even less. I have 200 or 300. Uh, probably barrels. less. Yeah. Generally we, speaking. We, we keep going on on the subject, okay? Because you were, were just talking about JCPOA. Maybe all people do not know, especially younger, what it means, just comprehensive plan of action. That's the abbreviation for that, which, which was signed, protocolized in 2015 between the Islamic regime and five plus one. It permits the regime to enrich uranium to 3.67. That's the main problem that we have now with the regime because you know in which percentage now regime can enrich. And that is the main problem that for both sides. How do you, how do you find these problems? How can we solve these problems? And China, Russia, they also signed this protocol in 2015. And they are, of course, allies of the Islamic regime. How do they react now? How do European countries react to this complicated problems, which probably is unsolved? Regime doesn't want to give up. And America has also insisted in this, this, this uh, enrich uranium enrichment, uh, which is uh, too high. It's, it's only one step to 90% needed for the bomb. Go ahead and just, it is your floor, please. Five minutes again. Yes. Stay off the subject. If you let me finish uh, the, uh, the reason they need this negotiation, uh, which was about their financial situation, and let you know that it's right now, it's very necessary for the regime. Why? Because they only have three resources for income just to uh, survive. The first one is their, uh, let's say, saving account, which is less than $9 billion. The second one was the money frozen in the foreign banks, which they can just access to $4 billion. So the total right now is $13 billion available in their disposal. The third one was selling oil and I mean revenue from oil and gas. Last year, it decreased from $100 billion in 2015 to just $11 billion in 2020. So if they continue to sell to sell the same thing, I mean the same uh, process, they are entitled to probably in 2021 they they can get about uh, 15 billion dollars. So they can think that they might can sell 15 billion dollars of oil and gas. They have nine billion dollars in their saving account, and they are entitled to $4 billion from the money in uh, foreign banks. The total comes to about $28 billion. That's their revenue. But how about the expenses? Their expenses in 2015 was $100 billion. Their expenses in 2020 came to about $65 billion. How did they pay? They paid from the saving account. 
they they paid from the money they have in foreign banks. But 65 million billion is something that brings the minimum necessity to Iran. 65 billion. How much they are expecting in 2021? Just 28 billion. So there is a deficit close to $37 billion deficit, which for that, you can expect a kind of economical collapse very fast. So that's the necessity for Iranian regime to go to this meeting and try to remove the sanctions. The sanctions are killing them. That's the reason they are trying to remove the sanctions. But at the same time, they don't want to give, uh, give up any kind of, uh, you know, uh, any points or something that makes uh, the other side, which is United States, the winner of this game. So, but I'm sure at the end, because they are in a very, very dire situation, I mean, financially, they're gonna give, give up a lot of things to the United States and European. So that's the reason Iranian are there and trying to come to a conclusion. About the, uh, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to know, you, you mean, uh, despite all the hypocrisy they have, they still want to have a part of cakes for themselves, just to get rid of this uh, economic crisis that you mentioned. Is that yes. what they want? I mean, hypocrisy, but it's very clear, but how, how can, for example, Europeans and Americans do not realize it? They understand, everybody knows that. If I know that, I'm sure that the United States knows better than me. Okay. But the, the thing is, United States has shown his uh, willingness that they don't want this regime to collapse or remove. They okay. want a regime like uh, current regime in Iran, which is in a desperate situation, and they always can get whatever they want. Okay, it's a good client, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's a very good and generous client, okay. and in a dire situation. So he always comes to you at the United States, and you can you know, get benefits, whatever benefits you think, from this client, so why they should let them go? They want him to help him. Okay. Why? Because they have 150 billion barrel of oil in their uh, under their uh, ground. Madinija. No, no, no. I mean, the 150 billion barrel of oil is in our reserves. Okay. Yes. 150 billion. Yes, if yes, you yes. multiply that by $60 per barrel, yeah, yeah. it comes to about $9 trillion. Right. Yes. So it's a very rich uh, client yes. that you can, you know, not, not only get benefits, you can scheme it, you can yeah, yeah. get it. So it's con Iran is trying... considered like an idol on a gold or black gold or on petrol and gas, yes, of course. Yes, yes. And of so, course, in Persian gold, in Caspian a lot, which gave up <laughs> to Russia. Yes. So it's a very rich country, or it's a very rich uh, client, as you mentioned, <laughs> which is good. Uh, so they don't want them to go. They just want him to behave. Okay. What does it mean? Behave means stay with us. Okay. Listen to us. Okay. Open your market to us. But despite, despite all problems, for example, Americans are a bit far away from uh, the region. But Europe, you know, bunch of political asylum, asylum to uh, just move to Europe from, uh, from, uh, from the region. And that makes really problem for Europe, especially for Germany, my country. I know that one million came to Germany in 2015 and 16 
mostly from Syria, North Africa. And they, of course, uh, they came uh, and they were accepted by the uh, by German uh, by German uh, government. Uh, Madame Merkel accepted them, but the problems they created because of cultural, you know, disparity with the European mentality and all this stuff caused to uh, some problems for them. And then German closed the doors, the gates, but no more. But we just want to talk about this hypocrisy and complications that exist still. According to, to the confirmed news by authorities of the Islamic regime, including Rouhani and uh, some other, some other high-ranking people, uh, not only uh, the number of centrifuges has been reduced as it was supposed in the agreement of 2015, as you just mentioned, but second and third generation of centrifuges have been added to them. What is now the reaction of the US and Europe? Because it shows that regime is looking for the bomb, or at least this, this, uh, this hypothesis can be now strongly and very sadly probably propagated all over the world. What is the reaction of European and why they want to accept still a good client which may be, that may be a very aggressive client at the end. So very good question, my friend. Uh, what Iranian regime has in their hand in this negotiation? Nothing except one card, which is we're gonna go atomic, we're gonna go nuclear. So if you don't want us to be nuclear, listen to us. Uh, uh, we, we need something from you. The thing they are wanting is remove the sanctions. They always say that. And that's the reason that you see Israel goes to Iranian uh, enrichment facilities like Natanz and blow it up because Israel wants to get the card from the hand of the regime and says, you don't have anything. You, you, you are just bluffing. Uh, you, you, were, you were just uh, hinting to Israel as uh, uh, the one who did the, the, this uh, so-called sabotage. They, 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 they didn't call it sabotage. They call it first the accident. In the first, I read, I read Spiegel, German newspapers. And they talked about accident. The day after, the word accident became sabotage. And sabotage now is officially announced by all authorities. And you know, why, why uh, this, this change of uh, vocabulary? Why? Uh, you know, uh, we have seen hypocrisy among the Iranian, among the other countries, policymakers. It doesn't matter. The thing is, this is very coincidentally that one week before the meeting in Vienna, the Natanz is uh, going to, uh, up to the air. So, that, so you that's mean that was Israel point. behind that? Uh, I, I think Israel is. Israel has announced that we have done that. Yes, one of I their know. ministers said that we have planned that bomb yeah, about I think, 10 I think years ago. I read like also that. in a Spiegel, I read in a Spiegel quoting some Israeli media that Israeli media wrote also something from quoting uh, some Iranian uh, staff or newspapers that Mossad was behind this act, act of sabotage. I mean, Israel shows he doesn't like, of course, any agreement in Vienna, apparently. So, but he still he, he tries to stir up the situation to make it more complicated, probably. Is that what you mean? Or, uh, you know, uh, 
it, I believe that that was the only card Iranian had to play in this Vienna conference that, okay, if you don't remove the uh, sanctions, we're gonna go nuclear. We're gonna uh, increase our activities, uh, nuclear activities. We're gonna, we're gonna go from enrichment from 3.5 to 60. You know, uh, this is the only card they have. They, what else they have? Nothing. So that the, for that reason, and because Israel doesn't want to see a, another uh, agreement between United States and Iranian regime, uh, Israel goes and blows that up. So there is no card right now in the hand of Iranian. Iranian regime is in a very, uh, let's say, weak situation in the negotiation. And they have, right now, they have to, to listen to whatever they say, uh, United States, European Union, Russia, and China. And they all love that. They all love this situation that Iranian has nothing in his hand for negotiation. And at the same time, they are desperate and they need money. And uh, I believe this is the ideal situation, whatever uh, these superpower wanted, it's now there and they can take advantage, whatever they want from Iranian regime. Iranian regime had a, a kind of leverage on nuclear deal and a kind of leverage based on terrorism. They already had groups like Hezbollah in Lebanon, Hashd al-Shabi in Iraq, uh, some Houthis in Yemen. These are terrorist groups that okay, they can- Okay, 16 terrorist the, groups all over the uh, region. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I read it also uh, Spiegel. That's also an important uh, uh, news uh, magazine which is online. And I translated this part of uh, this part of the staff, which I just uh, following. I read for you. Iranian delegation, quoting Spiegel, in Vienna, stressed last week. Spiegel was on 17th April, two days ago, that they stopped the negotiation if nothing comes up from this negotiation. And that was a kind of threaten the situation. But later on, the same guy this uh, vice minister, uh, Arachi, said, we are happy to improve the negotiation. So he looks, he looked like completely different. As you said, this hypocrisy is very, very evident and very uh, prospectively, <laughs> very clear. It shows up in every, every single word they pronounce, they pronounce. That is just to conclude your uh, statement about this conspiracy, about this uh, about conspiracy, the, the hypocrisy. But sometimes they don't know how to manage it. They are not enough intelligent, enough educated to know how to play with the wars diplomatically, and how to get the things done as they need. Is that true? Uh, yes, you know, it reminds me when I was a small boy at home. Uh, sometimes I was get uh, disappointed or let's say upset with my mom. And because I knew she likes me, she loves me, I wanted, I would say that I'm not going to eat anything any, anymore. No, I don't eat anything. And then it was the dinner time and I, mom was, uh, you know, uh, getting a dish for me. Uh, I was hungry and I wanted to eat. And I was saying, you know, I'm not gonna eat, but that is not enough. So <laughs> it reminds me the same thing. Iranian regime has nothing in his hand, you know, nothing very valuable to play in this, uh, negotiation or to show something. So they have to just change their 
course of action and talking from day to day. One day they say, no, we, we don't want to negotiate with the United States directly or indirect, or indirectly. Then they come to Vienna, they send a delegation to the Vienna and then they start negotiating. Uh, at the same time, they say, but we don't see any progress. Next day they say, yeah, it's, it's going to go to somewhere because they want to, uh, to eat the dinner. They, they are very hungry. They are, as I said, they are in a very uh, desperate situation right now. So they have to come to a conclusion. This is their last chance. And everybody knows that. Well, it, it comes to my mind when you say that they want to achieve their goal in any price. Is the goal also to have 200 new centrifuges to enrich uranium at to 60%? Is, is that not so risky in your opinion? I mean, as a, as a kid, as you said, your kid, as a kid, you might say something, but you know that your mom accepts at the end, you, you have your, your dish. But it's not that risky if you would say your mom, if you don't give that, I'll explode, for example, your kitchen. Yes, that, uh, that's, that's something it, like that, like the yeah. situation actually goes on. Exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah, you are right, and that's what what is exactly they are saying. That if you don't uh, give us the lunch or dinner, we're gonna blow up the kitchen. But the thing is, mom knows that they are not capable of that. Mom knows that the Israel is there. Israel is uh, you know breathing under their neck. So Israel is gonna blow up everything before them. So they are not able even to do that. It's just a bluff, a bluff in the poker game that everybody knows you don't have anything in your hand. So this is a desperate game. This is, a, they're not gonna win anything. They have to give a lot of you know, uh, things or give up a lot of things to remove the sanction. For that reason, Mr. Biden knows that very well. The American delegation knows that. European Union knows that. Russia and China knows that. So let's say uh, we are playing a game, a poker game, and we know that uh, everybody knows that my hand is uh, empty. I don't have any anything in my hand. And I want to bluff. So it's no, obvious that's that a question. That was also my question. I, I had just exactly in my mind to ask you if all this, um, you know, exaggerated uh, blocks, as you said, 60% uranium, uh, is not a bluff or is, is, a, is a real fact? What do you think? Uh, you know, it's it's hard to say it's not a bluff and it's hard to say that they are capable to do that. It's in gray area. It means that uh, they might try to do that, but at the same time, uh, United States knows that if the co time comes, they can bomb all the facilities. Israel knows about that and Israel already showed that they have every information about Iranian secret, uh, secret uh, projects. So they blow up everything they want on, when the time comes. So generally speaking, uh, it's, it's a kind of bluffing, but I call it desperate bluffing, not a okay. real, real bluff. So exactly, they, was in the middle, in the middle of Vienna meeting, which is vitally important for Islamic regime and its, uh, mm -hmm. uh, its existence actually in these economic crises that you described. Uh, there is no compromise if they put on the table 200 cent new centrifuges. Where, they, where do they come from? Do you know the, the origin of this new centrifuges are from North Korea, from China? From I'm not even sure if there is something like that because there is no, uh, at least uh, something 
tangible information that says this is what they have. But even if they have it, it, it doesn't mean that they're gonna have the uh, atomic bomb next week. Exactly. At least, exactly. Uh, at yeah. least it will take another year for them yeah. to, to come close to, uh, you know, have the capability of nuclear uh, bomb or something like that. Yeah. But the problem is time is ticking for the Iranian regime as I mentioned in the first, that financially, it's it's a horrible situation. They have about 65% deficit. And how they can overcome to that, it's, it's almost impossible. And just think about Iran. What is going on with the Iranian people? Iranian people showing protests, strikes, Every day, unfortunately, uh, uh, Western media doesn't sh uh, show that because, as I said, their government is in a, uh, in a situation they want to keep this regime. But Iranian regime knows that people are very angry, people are poor, people are hungry, and they are in the street every day. Every day we have... Uh, protests, strikes, whatever. The, the jails are and the prisons are full of the uh, political activists. So True. it's a very, very dangerous situation for regime. That's why I call the new year 2000, uh, 20, uh, 2021 a very critical uh, year for the Iranian regime. Okay, well, I, I, I actually, I avoid uh, calling that Iranian regime, I say Islamic regime, mostly, <laughs> That's, yes. or, or the regime. Okay, but you, you are just emphasizing on the point that all these uh, staff, about 60%, and even 80%, you know, they uh, disperse this rumors around just uh, probably to make uh, probably fear. But um, this, uh, this only is a bluff that they were not at that stage, uh, even for probably 20% enrichment, because they, they announced that before that they got 20%, 20 uh, of course, for industry pharmaceutical reasons. Uh, they try to just find all this solution for everything. Yeah, justify it, yeah. And now, the day after the accident or sabotage in Natanz, as you said, the day after, one day after, they said we reached now 60% in one day, one single day. Is that, of course, uh, probably uh, the bluff, as you say, you emphasized on the bluff, yeah? Exactly. Uh, you know, uh, they know that this is a bluff. But it's something that probably when you have empty hand, uh, probably you are trying to find something, at least to show that, no, I am not an empty hand. I have something, but you don't know. It was very secret. These are uh, childish, my friend. It's okay. childish. Another and side, another side, another, another, another version of this blood could be against actually Iranian people to make them understand, to warn them not to protest against the regime because the regime is so powerful. That, that could be a kind of propaganda for regime. I don't know if it's uh, people in Iran can buy that because uh, Iranian regime tell them, hey guys, your uh, Sardar Soleimani has been killed and you didn't do anything. Israel bombing your uh, facilities in Syria on ba daily basis and you are not doing anything. Israel killed your uh, Sardar Fakhri Nejad. The guy was on the uh, head of the nuclear program inside Iran and you didn't do anything. And now they blow up the Natanz facility twice and you couldn't do anything. So I don't see a kind of, you know, credit for regime to show that 
you know, I am very dangerous. I'm very powerful. Everybody, every regime uh, is counting on me as a very powerful uh, regime. No, uh, people understood that, that they are just bluffing. They are weaker than whatever they think. And I don't see any credit for that. But this is a regime, a very uh, hypocritic regime trying to uh, show off his uh, power. But generally speaking, it's a very uh, sad situation for the regime because their, uh, their money is going to be dried up very soon for resources of the money. And at the same time, they have people inside Iran. Not only they don't support the regime, they want to you know, kill these guys because they blame them for their uh, poor, for not having enough money, for not having enough uh, opportunities to uh, groove, to thrive. So uh, I believe the regime is in a final stages. But there are also, you were talking about Enrico Mora, uh, who is actually the European Union's deputy uh, foreign, foreign policy in uh, uh, Belgium, in uh, Brussels. He, is, he wrote it, he tweeted that he is very optimistic about the result of this Vienna, uh, Vienna meetings. You, I mean, Europe here is also hypocrite because they they play actually a, a complicated rules. They want to kill the bird, uh, two birds with one stone. Actually, they want to have America in their side because they use uh, all these uh, uh, commercial exchanges with America. And another part, they want to keep also. The regime, as you said, in power because of the economic and probably uh, diplomatic uh, interests they have. Why, why Mora in that situation that everybody is now angry with 60% comes right and says uh, the Joint Commission meeting is satisfied with the regime and we will arrive probably a satisfactory conclusions with the, with the Islamic regime. What, what do you think that? Uh, you know, uh, I believe uh, he's right and I believe he's supporting my theory because uh, he knows that the regime has nothing big in his hand. And he knows that regime should, uh, you know, bow and accept whatever they're going to offer. He doesn't have any choice. So both sides are bluffing, actually. No, no, uh -huh. no. The European uh, Union knows what they are saying. They are saying that we know that we can milk this cow. Okay. He's trying to show uh, his horns or her horns to us and says, no, don't come close to me. But we know that we're going to milk this cow very well. Everybody wants to make this call. United States, European Union, Russia, China. The, the thing is, this call says that at least give me something when you're milking me. That's, that's the probably the main important part of the discussion in the Vienna. True. And another part also uh, from Spiegel, Spiegel uh, just translated. Uh, Mr. Arachi, the head of uh, the head of uh, who heads the Iranian delegation in Vienna, stressed last week that Iran was not interested in endless negotiations. You see the hypocrisy. He said that a week ago, and now yesterday, he is talking about the satisfactory results and happiness and also European uh, uh, delegations have also uh, pronounced their satisfaction as they want to prolong uh, the, 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 the parasitic life of this Islamic regime in any price. You know, that means that uh, they have, uh, I mean, uh, 
they have talked to Iranian delegation and they told them that we know you don't have anything. Your hand is empty, so uh, cut the chase and let's talk the business. And Iranian regime, at least the delegation, they understood that they don't have anything in his hand. So uh, instead of uh, talking propaganda or giving something for uh, feeding news or propaganda for uh, Iranian back in Iran, they understood that they have sit on the table and behave like a, a good boy. And uh, other groups, I mean, Russia, China, European Union, and United States will dictate their will on this regime. I have no doubt about that. Regime and his delegation can talk about, uh, we are very powerful, we are not gonna accept anything. No, we don't give you any advantage. You cannot take advantage from us. These are just words, has no, uh, value, to be honest with you. The, yeah. the real thing going to happen, and very soon we're going to see another contract or agreement with, the, with them. I'm sure about that. They're going to get another agreement because right now, maybe some people think that China and Russia are with your Iranian regime. It might be true, but as long as the sanctions are there, they cannot do whatever they want to do. They, otherwise, they have to risk their relationship with United States and European uh, countries. Yeah. For that reason, even Russia and China are pushing this regime that go and listen to United States, come to a conclusion, conclusion that can let the United States remove the sanction. When the sanction has been removed, we have the you know, freedom to do business with you and we're gonna help you. But right now our hands are tied and we are not able to cooperate with you guys. So everybody on that uh, meeting are pushing Iranian delegation uh, to go and listen to United States if you wanna remove the uh, sanction. Another question, we've, we've been talking about uh, uh, what is going on in Vienna, Europe, China, Russia, America, and so on. And what is going on now in Iranian public opinions? How do they judge? We have love, we have hypocrisy, we have arguability, we have all these negative staff. And we know, we both know that these these negative uh, adjectives exist in their characters and their relationship with Europe, with America, but Iranian also know that. What is the reaction of Iranians in your opinion now about Vienna talks? Uh, I'm sure I did, under, uh, I did understand your question. Do you mean that what is the thoughts of mm, Iranian what, regime? What kind of authority? judgment? What kind of judgment now? Iranian people, average people. people, average people. Yeah. Now I don't I don't talk about intellectuals like you and people who are inside, outside, or in prisons mostly, but average people. How do they judge actually over what is going on in Vienna and how pessimistic? or optimistic they judge this uh, scenario? You know, I Iranian people back in Iran were very optimistic in 2015. And after that agreement, uh, people came to the street, they danced, they were happy. They thought that uh, every doors and opportunities has been open to Iran. So they're gonna uh, leave the poverty and they're gonna live a very nice life. Uh, you know, uh, United States and European companies come to Iran, they invest in Iran and the economy gonna thrive. That what was uh, the regime trying to tell to the people that this is the result of the agreement. It didn't happen. Even the Chinese and Russian companies left Iran out, uh, after 2015. So it's very hard to sell it again to the Iranian people that, uh, you know, wait, we know we messed up the 2015 agreement, but we're gonna get another agreement. And that's gonna bring you 
a lot of happiness. So wait, it's very, very hard. But as I said, also people like in Iran are desperate. They, okay. Most, more than 70% of Iranians live under the uh, uh, poverty line. Poverty it line, means okay. That people are yeah. very desperate. Yeah, I know that. Well, back to China and Russia, because you mentioned these two countries as uh, allies of the Islamic regime, or in another word, the countries that are not very really loved actually by average Iranians. Regarding the fact that China and Russia also signed this protocol of 2015, what you mentioned, that Iran is, or Islamic regime, I would say, the Islamic regime is allowed to have uranium enrichment to 3.667, I think, okay? They signed that. And now they hear about 20, 60, probably 80. Why do not they react according to the protocol they signed, the was protocolized in 2015, also in Vienna? What is the character, the hypocritic character of these two countries who support in any price, any price to any price, the Islamic regime? despite all these problems people of Iran have with this regime and all this crisis that is, these are created by the regime, mafiosi, uh, mafiosi bonds actually in Iran. Why these two countries do not hear to Iranian people? Uh, first of all, uh, I believe that China and Russia, they are not in favor of Iran as a nuclear country. They don't want to add another member to their uh, nuclear club, a club like uh, you know Russia, China, Pakistan, India, Pakistan, yeah. India, Israel, uh, some, of course. Yeah, some of these countries. They Italy. don't want to add, especially this crazy regime. Yes. They know that this is not a normal regime. It's a crazy regime. <coughs> and for that reason, I'm sure they, they don't want to see that. But how they act, it might be a little different. They might talk uh, in the uh, secret in a you know private room with the Iranian regime and tell them that you cannot have the nuclear uh, weapon in your hand. But uh, remember that that agreement has been left by United States. And after a while, Iranian regime said, so if they are not here, and, they're, and they, I believe they are, the regime was right. They said, we came to the table with you just to removing the sanctions. United States has left the agreement and has increased the sanction. So what is the uh, reason or what is the benefit of for us to stay in this agreement. So that agreement is already gone and they need a new agreement. In, the, in, in this new agreement, I believe the European, Russia, United States and China, they have higher hands than the fi last five years uh, which they had. So I believe this time they're gonna get more advantage from Iranian regime. Dr. Ibtikhari, good friend of mine, you have another three minutes, sir. The floor is yours to say your conclusion words. Three minutes. Okay, Go thank ahead, you please. so much. First of all, thank you for inviting me and thank you for the audience listening to this uh, discussion. I hope they find it uh, uh, benefit, uh, get some benefit of this discussion. But my conclusion is, Iranian regime has played his hands several times and now everybody knows how they play. At the same time, they know they had empty hands. So they, they cannot keep bluffing and bluffing. Uh, five years ago, they were in Syria with a very strong hold 
and powerful uh, situation in Syria, or generally speaking, in Middle East. It has been changed. Now they are weak, very weak, and they don't have uh, that kind of muscle to you know, bully other countries. That's one fact. The other fact is back in Iran, Iranian within last five, six years has been uh, very angry with this regime because none of their promises has been, uh, you know, uh, show anything. They haven't seen any of these promises come to a reality. And people are very angry. They are striking and protesting every day. And at the same time, the Natanz uh, facility, which was probably the uh, jewel of the crown of their uh, nuclear uh, program, uh, is already disabled. And it takes at least nine to 12 months to recover. But they don't have time for nine to 12 uh, months to wait for them to make it. Uh, uh, let's say, operatable, and then uh, try to play their game. For that reason, this uh, meeting in Vienna, it comes with a conclusion. Maybe uh, sometimes they say, no, we are not going to talk about that. We are going to leave in the Vienna. But it's the same that we saw five, six years ago in Vienna. They're going to come to a conclusion, and other countries, they're going to take big advantage of this regime. This exactly. is not going to happen. We, we will see very soon. It's exactly. The, the countries that uh, thoughtlessly try to uh, abuse the situation, actually, what this Islamic regime, which is not actually an Iranian body, but something like a force of uh, occupation in Iran, and had people of Iran and all uh, uh, rich us, uh, as hostage in hand and use them in their own, uh, in their own ambitions. Yeah. So that was our talks for today. We will probably meet each other here and we will talk also this subject or another new subject as you like, but it is not time to say goodbye to all audience of Rangin Kaman, I repeat it's the name means rainbow in English or l'arc-en-ciel in French. So thank you, Dr. Bijan Ibtikhari. That was a very, very brilliant answers for our audience and we we'll see each other next time.